What's going on YouTube? Today I want to review the Meganator. This is designed by Gordon from Armitage Designs and printed out by Foamdemic. So I just want to put out there, not being paid for this review, I've been asked to do this review and I actually jumped at the chance just because this is such a fun blaster. Not that that is any bias at all, but let's jump into this. So if you're not familiar with the Meganator or have not seen it, this blaster was initially designed to fire off Mega XL darts. If, and if you're not familiar with these darts, uh, these are absolutely fun rounds. Um, they remind me of whistle darts and uh, we use these for defend the core um, in 315. These will take two lives. So, you know, again, very, very fun round. Uh, I was a little skeptical of them myself, but obviously this came about. And from what I know, and I could be wrong, I believe that this was inspired by the Ultimator, which is a much older nerf blaster that fired off bigger missiles. I think missiles similar to the Titan rockets. But once this... Uh, blaster was designed it also became a platform for uh, to have other attachments and I will go over that in a little bit of detail a little bit later. So let's go over the blaster itself. First and foremost I have the final prototype or final design of this blaster. Um, this is not a production blaster this was more just you know making sure that everything kind of fit well and worked. Also, in this specific blaster, there are some fit issues and some other things that I was told about, and I will go over those and give you a better showing of this blaster as I speak more about it. So the blaster itself is printed in PLA+. The print quality of this is really, really good. No complaints no jams, everything has worked well for me in my testing uh, over the weeks. Starting from the back, you have a stock that can fit comfortably in your shoulder. It has a shoulder rest that you can actually prop the blaster on. I wouldn't really recommend it, but it is there. It has a Picatinny rail up at the very top for all of your other attachments and sights and such things. Obviously you have the thumb hole grip with the trigger, uh, the clear plunger tube. It also has Armatus Designs logo on the side, which is awesome. And for your priming handle, it has a thumb hole grip. But the nice thing about this is that it can be removed. And underneath there is also a small Picatinny rail. so any other type of priming handle that you prefer can fit there. The front is also clear on the underside, so if your priming handle extends past the rail, there is nothing on the blaster that will interfere with that. And also at the front, it has obviously the googly eyes, which is uh, just amazing, and the twisty barrel for the XML darts. From what I know, the spring combo in this blaster is a K25 plus a K18, which will come standard with the blaster build itself. So using the blaster. Using the blaster is typical of any other Nerf blaster out there. Loading is very easy. Um, obviously you only get one shot, but um, you know, it's not something that you have to twist. The It's not like a twist fit. Darts will slide in very easily. You don't have to worry about any type of vacuum load. You prime the blaster, you, um, and then pull forward, and then fire. Obviously, you can deprime, and the dart does stick out or come out a little bit if you do. But again, very smooth prime. Um, nothing is binding. There's no catches on it, and it's a very sturdy build. So some of the things that I don't like about the blaster. Well, it is a tough prime. Of the people who have tried this out here in my home, um, 
I was the only person to be able to prime this with one hand. So it had, does have a beefy spring combo. So that is one thing you have to consider about priming blasters, using blasters is if you're able to use this quickly enough if you are running around on a field. The other thing is that this does have some sharp edges. Uh, the main concern that I have is right up here. So let's jump back first for a second. Because there are some spacing issues that I was told about that have been fixed. Uh, one, this priming piece here will actually slide all the way up and meet with the very front of the blaster. So this space, this gap here, will not be there in the production of this blaster. There are also some spacing uh, gaps between the parts here on the body. There's some here as well um, on the other side of the body, as well as some um, artifacts, uh, some printing issues, and some gaps here along the bottom. But again, I've been told that the spacing, the fit issues are all been fixed. The one part that I don't know about, again, because of this sharp edge, is that your finger can get trapped down here, and mine did. So, primed it up there. Pretty sure I moved my hand up. But as you are pushing this forward, your hand, your finger, can get caught between this sharp edge and the priming grip, as mine did, and um, it, it got my knuckle, took off skin, and wasn't too much of an issue, but this can absolutely just kill your hand if you're slamming this forward, if you're not prepared for it. So you're either gonna have to remember to keep your hand down here the entire time, or maybe this handle needs like a curve or something to just be aware so that you're not gonna just keep ramming yourself and draw blood, because who wants that on the field? So that is my major concern. Um, I haven't spoken with uh, Gordon of Armadus Designs yet about this, so I don't know if that issue has been addressed yet, but it's something I will talk to him about. Just let him know that it's there and letting you guys know um, that it's a potential as well. So what do I like about this blaster? Well, again, it has a very smooth prime that's not catching on anything. It goes, you know, it primes really easily, fires very well, it's a very sturdy build. Um, also, you can deprime this. I love blasters that you can deprime. I hate the locks. I think we all hate the locks. Um, obviously loading, very quick and easy. Unfortunately, it's just one shot at a time, but you can't complain and just because, it, again, it's very quick. You don't have to twist anything in there, especially with a twisty barrel. It makes it just such a, a nice fit for the darts, quick and easy to load. The You have the rail here on top and obviously the rail down here at the bottom for your grip. So you've got customization and for attachments and you've got your googly eyes. I mean, who can complain? At having built-in googly eyes on your blaster. The other thing that I was pretty excited for is that this also became a platform where I know that the Frontier will be able to be removed and you can put on different firing attachments. This is the base model. The front doesn't remove, but I know that there will be RSCB attachments made available for the Meganator. If you're not familiar with an RSCB, you should be. <laughs> and um, I know that Gordon did use this blaster with RSCB. I think he had a double and a triple and worked amazing. And they said he was um, crazy out on the field like he normally is anyway, but with an RSCB and a double triple shot, um, it's absolutely just amazing. So, great that this is starting to become a platform with other firing attachments being made for it. So the Meganator will be able to be purchased 
on Foamdemic's website. Timing for the release, I do not know. I think it is maybe March, maybe late March, maybe a little bit in April, but I haven't, um, that hasn't been communicated to me yet. And I know Jade is not exactly sure, but this is coming in the future. So this blaster that you see is going to be the base model that you can buy. It will come with the double spring combo, but have an option for a lighter spring combo, either one or two, I'm not sure. The spacing issues and the gap um, issues are all going to be addressed, so you don't need to worry about that. Just remember that this is a final design, final prototype blaster. The colors, um, I'm told, like if you want to buy the, the kind of the default colors that you will see will be kind of a purple and orange color, and there will be a third color that I think will be black. But you can also choose custom colors for your blaster. But just, you know, th these are going to be kind of the, these areas will be primary, secondary, plus an option for a third. So just be aware that you'll be able to do, to choose your colors for the blaster. And there will be attachments, obviously, like I said. So it will have attachments available for RSCBs. Um, I know that they have some other things planned, but um, I don't know how much that will be. I don't know when those will come out. So be prepared for whatever this platform will evolve into, because um, Blaster itself is awesome, and I'm going to be scared when I face it on the field. But I just want to give a shout out to Gordon of Armatus Designs for this awesome concept, awesome creation of a blaster. Um, it is a lot of fun. It's going to suck to give it back. <laughs> and uh, major shout outs to Jade from Foamdemic for letting me borrow this blaster to review, to use, and uh, that I can share with you guys. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Hopefully I'll be able to answer them. Um, if you want to bug Jade about when this will be available, you can go on to her website on Etsy. Uh, I will put links in the description. There you go, there you go guys. The Meganator uh, from Armatus Designs, sold by Foamdemic. It's gonna be a beast on the field. <laughs> All right guys, we'll see you later. Where can I get it? Where can I get this?